Welcome. I am Rita Landgraf, faculty at the University of Delaware College of Health Sciences. I will serve as your MC this morning and appreciate you joining us as we kick off the National Health Corps pilot. You will be hearing more from our dignitaries as to the value of the Health Corps program and what value that will bring to Delaware, especially during our most critical time. As you have seen this past year, our county executive, Matt Meyer, is a true champion and advocate for public health and continues to be instrumental in our COVID response, support, and recovery. The National Health Corps pilot will add yet another tool in our toolbox to support our communities so impacted by the severe consequences of this pandemic. It is now my extreme honor to introduce Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer to share his vision and commitment to bringing Health Corps to the first state. Thank you so much, Rita. Uh, we really appreciate you being here today. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with you online. To all our guests joining us on Facebook Live, welcome. Uh, please feel free to type any questions uh, you have in the comment section below. And hopefully, if we have time, we'll have a chance to get to them at the end of our briefing. To all of our friends representing national service organizations, thank you for your partnership and your attendance today. We're so lucky to be joined today by Natalie Lefkovich, the CEO of the Health Federation of Philadelphia, which collaborates with the National Health Corps and programs all across this country. We appreciate your work during this critical time across our nation, um, and uh, particularly Tisha Nickering and Leslie Lieberman, who've been absolutely critical to us getting the, this program off the ground right here in Delaware. Thank you also to Karen Dahl, who's AmeriCorps' National Senior Advisor for COVID-19. Uh, we look forward to your partnership so we can hit the ground running with this program. I personally was an AmeriCorps member, which of course makes today's announcement uniquely personal uh, and special for me. To Paul Calistro, who's here, he chairs the Governor's Commission on Service and Volunteerism. Thank you for joining us. Paul called me back in April, a few minutes after I heard from Senator Kuhn's staff and just said, let's do this. He's been on me since then saying, when are we getting it started? And we appreciate your support as we join the other national service programs operating in Delaware and look forward to expanding beyond this pilot that we are announcing today. I recognize also there are frontline healthcare workers watching today at Henrietta Johnson and Westside Health Planned Parenthood at Nemours and St. Francis and Bay Health and Christiana Care. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your selfless service on the front lines. We are here today to further support and supplement your tremendous efforts and your partnership uh, to this program will be a key to its success. Uh, seven months ago, I read an op-ed uh, in Delaware Online by Jordan Hines about health inequity and COVID-19 in our communities right here in Newcastle County. A few weeks later, we launched a task force to address inequities under the leadership of Vanessa Phillips and Alicia Clark and numerous community leaders. I wanted to recognize their important work and, and today's announcement is in part a result of that excellent uh, community leadership. And to our federal delegation who are all here today, one of the beautiful things about Delaware, Senator Carper, Senator Coons, Representative Blunt Rochester, we cannot thank you enough for your support throughout this pandemic every day, constantly answering our questions about CARES Act funding, making sure that our local governments are partnering uh, to get the right federal support. And of course, for the deadline extension just a few weeks ago that made today's announcement possible. We're thankful for your service to our state and our nation. Uh, last week, I think we all heard Amanda Gorman teach us that the norms and notions of what just is, is not always justice. And today is about looking at what just is in our own communities that is not justice and actually doing something about it. Uh, here's what just is, a virus just is continuing to threaten the health of families across our country and particularly here in Newcastle County and under-resourced under uh, communities, health inequities that have existed for as long as our country has, but now we are seeing those inequities exacerbated like never before. A pandemic of mental health and substance abuse just is. It just is getting worse with each passing day of this pandemic, a pandemic of food insecurity just is. I was out on Saturday with two different community groups and lines for food and basic 
assistance like we've never seen before here in our county. And of course, economic inequality that just is the so-called K-shaped recovery, haves who are benefiting from a record high st stock market and have nots, families for whom things just gets harder and harder un and unbearably harder with each passing week. We truly are at risk of losing an entire generation to poverty, to crime, and to violence. Today's announcement is about taking the inspiration of Gorman and the leadership of Senator Kuhn to look at what just is and envisioning a greater justice. Uh, we have an urgent need, as we've seen, to put all hands on deck to assist the State Division of Public Health with vaccine dissemination and to address longstanding health inequities that have been exacerbated in this pandemic. We in Newcastle County using federal CARES Act funding will be um, creating a program with 20 members that we're announcing uh, today. Uh, we've been challenged in the past 10 months in ways we never imagined. This is another investment, a commitment to build a lasting justice, creating jobs that directly address these inequalities. In many of my conversations with Senator Coons over the last few months, we discussed the importance of, ad, of activating so many citizens to join a national service program. In fact, Senator Coons wrote about this nationally nine months ago and introduced legislation back in April, legislation that he is still, even uh, I saw him this weekend, advocating for. Something like we're doing here in Newcastle County needs to happen nationally. And we're excited today to announce that we are starting here. 60 years ago, uh, in 1960 at 2 a.m. on a cold Michigan night, President Kennedy asked who among you would be willing to serve your country and the cause of peace by living and working in the developing world? That one question birthed the Peace Corps. And today we ask Delawareans, who among you would be willing to serve your country, your county, your state, and the cause of justice by serving on the front lines of this pandemic right here in Newcastle County? Uh, we are all indebted to Senator Kuhn's staff, uh, who has worked in collaboration with Andrea Allman and Eric Razor Schramm on my staff. Eric, also a former uh, Delaware AmeriCorps member, uh, and my whole county government team with the Health Federation of Philadelphia and AmeriCorps to create the ex this exciting pilot program that will take engaged citizens and provide them an incredible opportunity to serve our community, to reinforce the heroic efforts of our frontline healthcare workers where they need it most. In closing, I want to say that this program, from our point of view, is just a start. It's a single step in the right direction. But with the continued support of our partners, our federal and state leaders, this has the potential to have serious, long-term, lasting, sustainable impact on the health of our entire community. Senator Coons, as most of you know, is no stranger to national service from the I Have a Dream Foundation to getting a call I've heard about over 20 years ago from then Governor Carper to serve on the state's AmeriCorps Commission right here in Delaware, to his inspiring leadership, yes, as county executive, starting something called the Emergency Service Corps. Senator Coons does not just talk the talk, he walks the walk. Thank you so much for your support. And with that, I'd like to invite Senator Coons to say a few words. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you, County Executive Meyer, um, for your leadership in response to this pandemic. Uh, Governor Carney has done a remarkable job at leading our state uh, and you've been a great partner. Um, this opportunity today where we're announcing an AmeriCorps program, uh, an expansion of the National Health Corps that's headquartered in Philadelphia is genuinely exciting to me. Uh, Matt is a former AmeriCorps member yourself. Um, you know well the ways in which national service creates opportunity uh, for Americans of all ages and backgrounds to serve here in our own nation, uh, much as President Kennedy called a young generation to serve overseas in the Peace Corps and others have been called to serve um, through VISTA. Service is fundamental to our country. It was part of the strategy um, that FDR used to get us out of the Great Depression by launching the Civilian Conservation Corps and a commitment to serving each other um, goes throughout American history back to its, back to its very founding. Uh, Paul, it's great to be with you uh, as the energetic and engaged uh, chair of our state commission as someone um, yourself who's shown your capacity to innovate and to lead and to be a wonderful, a grounded community leader and manager of one of Delaware's most capable and promising nonprofits. Uh, I'm so grateful for what you and the commission have made possible. Uh, Rita, thank you for your leadership at the University of Delaware uh, in the cabinet as an advocate and for sharing your wisdom uh, with all of us as we've worked to pull together this compelling model. 
uh, more than anything, uh, I wanna thank Natalie, um, as well as Leslie and Tisha uh, at the National Health Corps for what you've already done, for building the foundation of a great model uh, worthy of expansion and replication um, in this unique moment where the United States faces a once in a century pandemic, uh, a once in a half century renewed nationwide focus on racial inequality uh, and equity challenges in our healthcare, housing, education, opportunity and policing systems. Um, this is an opportunity for us to re-examine how we deliver public health in the United States, how we care for each other, and how we help build more equitable opportunities for each other. I could not be more excited than to have us partner with you. And to the folks in my office, uh, the other congressional delegation offices, the governor's office and the county executive's office, uh, who've worked so hard together with you um, to bring this model to fruition, thank you. Um, I have five AmeriCorps members uh, who serve with me, uh, two in Washington, three here in Delaware. And that's just a reminder of the ways in which a year or two spent in service to our nation uh, through AmeriCorps and other national service programs is a great foundation, uh, a great beginning to a career of giving back into public service. One of the things I'm most excited about, uh, about the National Health Corps model uh, and their partnership with us here in Delaware is the way they have carefully planned for how to work equity and concerns about racial equity and access to quality health care into their program model. One of the core elements of that, it's also a core element of the CORE Act uh, that Corey Linen has helped me develop and helped build out as a strong bipartisan bill in Washington. One of the core elements of that is a robust living allowance, um, significant benefits for members um, to allow Americans of all backgrounds and means and opportunity to participate. Um, the targeting of a balance of placement sites um, from larger institutions that have long established relationships with AmeriCorps or other uh, community resources to much smaller community-based organizations who may be participating uh, with AmeriCorps for the first time. Uh, and last, a real and sustained investment in recruiting to make sure that we are recruiting AmeriCorps members um, who will serve in the communities in which they already have ties in order to ensure that activities from contact tracing uh, to PPE distribution, to vaccination, to other public health interventions, uh, are going to be uh, culturally competent, sustainable, and effective. This is an absolutely critical part of making sure that we are delivering resources that can effectively meet the moment of this pandemic in the context of our country and this moment in our history. Um, I was excited uh, that President Biden recently signed an executive order about how to respond to this pandemic that recognizes that we must invest in the um, breadth and strength and sustainability of our public health workforce. Um, those folks who have made a career out of being public servants and working for public health agencies and entities across our country, and that national service, particularly AmeriCorps, can provide some badly needed relief, some additional uh, eyes and hands on the problems that face our nation right now, and can be an important complement uh, to the strategy of strengthening our national public health workforce. So I am so excited to work together. Natalie, and to everyone in NHC, thank you for your leadership. Uh, Matt, thank you for your leadership at the county. Uh, and I wanna now thank the gentleman responsible um, for my being not just appointed to the commission that oversees national service here in Delaware, but introduced to my wife as a result. So I have a lifelong debt of obligation uh, to my dear friend and senior senator, our former governor, Tom Carper. Thank, thank you very much, Chris. You all heard of the term uh, constituent service. And when I was governor, among the constituent services I provided was to enable uh, Chris Coons and Annie Langan's public to meet. And it's been a marriage made in heaven and a lot of good things, a lot of great things have come uh, from, from that union. Chris, I just want to take my hat off to you. I know how much you, you care about this, uh, this initiative, this endeavor. I know how long you have worked. Uh, just to, because it's the right thing to do to uh, encourage uh, others to take uh, take advantage of the opportunity to serve and to help uh, our community in Delaware and across across the country. I like to tell the, the story when, when I was privileged to serve as governor. One Friday afternoon late, uh, most of my staff had left our state office building in Wilmington. And a member of my staff came forward and said, uh, we have this letter here, we're not sure how to answer it. And I said, well, let me see. And, we looked at it, it was a Xerox letter it was a, from a, a gal in another state. Her name was uh, Melissa. And uh, she it was a Xerox letter and said, Dear Governor, didn't say Dear Governor Carper. It says, 
Dear Governor, I'm writing the governor of all 50 states. I'm writing to ask all of you the same question. And the question is, what is the secret to happiness? I said to my staff, I said, um, just give that one to me and I'll use my pen and pick a notepad out. And uh, I wrote uh, notes to, to folks on and, and I wrote probably the only handwritten response she got to her Xerox letter, probably the only, uh, probably the shortest uh, response she got to her Xerox letter is one uh, paragraph in my response there was one a sentence in the response there was there were two letter two words in that response and I wrote dear Melissa serve others that's all I wrote dear Melissa serve others and uh, that is the uh, the secret to happiness and Chris Coons knows that uh, as well as anybody and he's lived it with his own life and trying to make uh, opportunities for for others to uh, to to know that joy and to make a great uh, contribution at a time when we need uh, those contributions I want to take my hat off to to Matt Meyer and his team for, uh, for all of your work in setting up this opportunity in Delaware for these, uh, these 20 young people to be part of, of this, uh, this endeavor. We have lost so far in this pandemic, I uh, heard the other day, we've lost more people than we lost in the, uh, I used to say we lost more than we lost in the Vietnam War, 58,000. We've now lost, I believe, more people in uh, this pandemic than we lost in all of World War II. And uh, there's something we can do about it. It requires the efforts of all of us. This is an all hands on deck moment. And a lot of people who like to serve or like to help and like to volunteer are gonna have the opportunity right here in, in Delaware because of Chris and because of, of Matt and your staff. So I just wanna to applaud to you and thank you. And uh, let's uh, get this uh, let's get this party started, all right? Congratulations, it's great to be with all of you. And uh, Rita, especially wonderful to, to see you and, and Lisa, uh, our congressista. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Carper, and thank you for your dedication and being a steady force in public service. Also having served as our treasurer, a congressman, governor, and senator, surely a true commitment to public service. It is now my pleasure and honor to introduce Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, Delaware's first woman and first black woman elected to Congress. She too is no stranger to public service and has a strong history in public health and equity advocacy. Having served in leadership roles within the Department of Health and Social Services, the Department of Labor, and as our state personnel director. Congresswoman Blunt Rochester, thank you so much for your leadership and continued importance of our COVID response locally and nationally for advancing health equity. Congresswoman Blunt Rochester. Good morning and thank you so much, Rita. Uh, thank you all for being here for such exciting news. Um, today is about some good news. And um, this, this pilot, um, I, I, I look at my uh, friend, Senator Chris Coons, uh, who this was a vision that uh, he had going back to the beginning of this pandemic. Um, you know, and when I thought about today and what this means, First of all, it is uh, with gratitude that we thank the National Health Service, that we thank Matt Meyer in the county, that we thank all of the participants, AmeriCorps, for making this day a reality. But I think back again to the beginning where Chris Coons had this vision. And to me, what is so important about this um, is that I think about three words, boldness, impact, and trust, boldness. As the Senator mentioned, um, we think back to FDR and some of the times in our history where we were most challenged as a country. It took boldness, not a little thing here and a little thing there. It took a bold vision to tackle the major challenges that we faced in the past. And it requires bold vision for us to deal with this pandemic that as Senator Carper said, we know over 400,000 Americans have perished. And in Delaware alone, we recently witnessed our 1,000th person passing from this pandemic. And so it requires us to be bold in our activities. And so working with 
the, the health corps, working with the merit corps, focusing on even, and Paul Calistro and the work that Delaware does right here every day is very important and necessary. Impact, we have seen people lose their jobs, people lose their businesses, children not being able to be schooled, um, you know, just not even being able to be with our family and friends. By doing this pilot, we will be able to expand more people being able to be vaccinated. We will be able to deal with issues that we've been talking about from the beginning, testing, treatment. And we'll be able to build something that will have impact. And lastly, trust. The fact that we are looking at, and, and Matt, the focus on Newcastle County and, the, and making sure that these sites, these host sites, these are places that people trust. And what we have seen is that it requires trust. Vaccine hesitancy is about a lack of trust. Trust in a system, trust in healthcare, trust in, but we trust our doctors. We trust our community health centers. We trust each other. And so this is also about trust. And so I am so proud and pleased to be a part of this. But as Matt said, this is not the end of the line. There is so much more that needs to be done. And we as members of Congress pledge to you that we will continue to fight for money for testing, to fight for money for treatment, to fight for money to ensure that we have a vaccine that is produced and distributed and that gets into the arms of individuals so that we can, as Joe Biden would say, build back better in an equitable way. I'm so pleased to be with you. I'm so proud to be a part of this. And again, we will continue to fight for Delaware. Thank you. And I turn it back over to you, Rita. Thank you so much, Congresswoman, and truly our congressional delegation. You are so strong in your leadership, especially you know in public service, national community service, and Senator Coons, especially to you. Uh, you're you bird dog it all the time, making sure that we in our first state are pulling all our tools together to advance national service. So thank you for that. Um, as you mentioned, Senator Coons, unfortunately, Governor Carney was not able to attend this morning. As you know, all hands on deck uh, with getting that vaccine distributed, as Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester talked about, uh, you know, the tremendous amount of organization that goes into that. And I know right now his focus is primarily on ensuring uh, that we get that vaccine distributed. So um, he he sends his regard and how proud he is of the work that goes on in our first state. Uh, we did not want to delay in getting this word out uh, since we need to, as you hear. Uh, and it is my honor to introduce Natalie Lefkovich, who is the CEO of the National Health Federation of Philadelphia, who has done a tremendous job across our country. And we are so thankful to have her leadership and expertise to bring the National Health Corps here to Delaware. Natalie? Good morning and thank you. Um, I'm delighted and honored to be with you um, uh, this morning for this exciting launch event. I greatly appreciate the leadership and trust of Senator Coons, the assistance we've received from his staff, uh, the support of the Delaware uh, delegation, and the collaboration between our program team and colleagues in Delaware to get us to this point. The Health Federation has been, um, has been host to a public health focused AmeriCorps program since 1994. We're extremely pleased and excited to add Delaware to our National Health Corps network, which now consists of seven operating sites across six states from California to Florida. Over these many years, we've experienced firsthand the benefits that our National Health Corps brings to local communities. In a win-win-win proposition, citizens who make a commitment to community service by becoming AmeriCorps members gain practical training, 
a sense of meaning and satisfaction that comes from making a positive difference, the camaraderie that comes with teamwork, a living allowance, and at the end of a completed term of service, an education award. Their community host sites gain increased capacity to better meet their mission by extending their reach to address community needs. And the community as a whole gains enhanced infrastructure to address conditions that contribute to health disparities and inequity, the impact of natural disasters, and in this case, a global pandemic. Our National Health Corps members across the country um, have been helping to address all these public health needs and in 2020 pivoted to assist with the shifting demands related to COVID-19, including contact tracing, community outreach and education, and assistance with the logistics of testing and vaccination. That will be the primary focus of the newly funded and newly forming uh, National Health Corps in Delaware. Um, in Delaware. Um, the Health Federation will uh, be supporting and overseeing the rapid startup of the program to meet this urgent need. However, we will also be focused right from the start on long-term sustainability of the program because once established to help meet the current challenge of COVID-19, National Health Corps Delaware will be positioned to meet tomorrow's uh, ongoing and emerging public health needs as well. So we welcome this new partnership with our neighbors in Delaware and look forward to doing great work together for years to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natalie. It is great to have this partnership with you. And also we are very fortunate that Karen Dahl has joined us this morning representing the Biden administration as senior advisor for COVID-19 at AmeriCorps. She's also a proud AmeriCorps alumna and has done a wonderful things. Her extensive experiences in communication, policy, operations, and partnership. And we are just absolutely thrilled that she was able to put us on her schedule at this busy time to join us. So Karen, tell us more about uh, our partnership with you in bringing National Health Corps to Delaware. Thank you so much, Rita, for that introduction. And thank you, Senator Coons, Senator Carper, Congresswoman Blount Rochester, County Executive Meyer, Natalie Lefkovich, Paul Calistro, and the entire team that helped bring this exciting pilot AmeriCorps program to Delaware. I'm honored to join you on behalf of AmeriCorps, the federal agency for service and volunteering. In his first day in office, President Biden made it clear, as many of you had said, that one of the most urgent challenges facing this administration is to contain COVID-19 and help America build back better. Across the country, as you know, thousands of AmeriCorps members and AmeriCorps senior volunteers are doing just that. They are distributing food to hungry families and isolated seniors, helping struggling students, supporting local contact tracing and vaccination efforts, and more. The AmeriCorps members who will serve as part of this pilot will pledge to make our people safer, smarter, and healthier, just as more than a million Americans have done before them. As an AmeriCorps alum myself, I know the power that pledging to serve your country and community can have. Many years ago, I committed to get things done for America, and 20 years later, my belief in the power of those commitments has never been stronger. The American people are our nation's greatest strength and they are instrumental in helping us tackle this national emergency. As a senior advisor for COVID-19 at AmeriCorps, my task is to find ways to harness that strength and this pilot is a perfect example of the type of creative solutions that will help us get the job done. Americans are in this together, so we've got to tackle it together. I'm grateful that in my first few days on the job, I have the opportunity to join all of you and be a part of something that shows us all the potential that exists. The National Health Corps AmeriCorps program and its expansion into Delaware is an example for communities across the country to look to, a way to begin to recover and rebuild by tapping the power of national service. Thank you all for allowing me to be part of this announcement. Together, there's nothing we can't do. 
Thank you, Karen, um, for your tremendous history of service and for your support of our state as, as well. Um, when you mentioned, you know, as someone who can get the job done, um, thinking the one that's next on the agenda truly has proven to as someone who can get the job done and has dedicated his life as well to service to others. It is my extreme honor to introduce Paul Calistro, who is no stranger uh, to Delaware. He now uh, chairs the Governor's Commission on Community and Volunteer Service. The Delaware Commission on Community and Volunteer Service is committed to enriching the lives and communities by advocating for service and volunteerism, and he is just a tremendous leader for all of us. So I turn it over to you, Paul. Thank you, Rita. And thank you, Senator Coons, for your sense of urgency. You know, oftentimes I hear that government does not step up, but in this case, I have to say that this Senator Coons, Congressman Blunt Rochester, Senator Carper, and, 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 and Executive Matt Meyer immediately said, we need to have boots on the ground. We need to have a national health care service in Delaware. Mm -hmm. And on behalf of the Governor's Commission on Community Volunteerism, I'm excited because today we start to unleash that pent up urgency that so many of us felt. You know, our mothers and our friends and our neighbors are calling us and asking us, when can we get the vaccine? Where can we get tested? How can we help? Well, today we can start answering those questions in a broader way by working with our national partners, our partners in Philadelphia, the county, the state, and the federal government together. You know, if you'd like to volunteer, you can go to the website nccde.org backslash 2179 NHC Delaware, and we'll put that up on the screen. We are excited to have a new sense of national service joining the hundreds of other AmeriCorps volunteers that have worked with the governor's commissioners and the staff. We're excited to help recruit and in any way possible, we are here to serve. So thank you all for your teamwork and pulling this together. And as soon as this is over, I will be on the phone going to work for you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for your tremendous dedication. Again, um, Paul put that website, uh, it's nccde.org backslash 2179 backslash NHC dash Delaware. We really want to, you know, go live as quickly as we can. We are right now announcing the recruitment for the program director and the program coordinator. The applications are actually due in two weeks by February the 8th. And the also info will be posted, as Paul said, for recruiting of our host sites. If you want to learn more and apply, host site applications are due in three weeks by February the 15th, so a really short turnaround time, but we know you're up to, up to it. You've shown us that, Delaware, since the pandemic hit our state. Uh, the county will also host an information session for host sites, and that is on Thursday this Thursday, January the 28th at 2.30. Um, and the link for that meeting will also be on the webpage. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us this morning uh, as the moderator have really uh, feel empowered, uh, have hope in my heart and my soul that in Delaware, we can get this job done. Very grateful for the National AmeriCorps and what they do across their, the country, but specifically here in our home state. And very thankful for our county exec, Matt Meyer, and former county exec, uh, Senator now, Chris Coons. And before we close out, just any closing remarks, county executives. Rita, I'll just say um, thank you to Matt and thank you um, to Karen. Um, Karen, it's been great to have you join us to speak on behalf of AmeriCorps as a program nationally. 
uh, as everybody on this call knows, uh, I am going to continue to fight hard um, for bipartisan support for additional appropriations and for an authorization to expand the scope of how we're utilizing national service to respond to this moment. Uh, we have millions of Americans in need. Uh, our food banks all over the country are seeing uh, record lines of folks uh, seeking food help um, to stave off hunger uh, for the first time in uh, the modern era here in the United States. AmeriCorps could play a key role in responding to that. We have tens of millions uh, of children, of school children, of teachers, of paraprofessionals in schools all over the country um, still working to make sure that they're able to learn uh, in a distance learning setting um, safely. And um, they could also benefit from the additional resources provided by uh, younger AmeriCorps members who can help with the technology challenges. Um, we have climate change and conservation challenges across our country um, that could benefit from an AmeriCorps program uh, much like the one the Delaware State Parks uh, has long provided here in Delaware. And of course, the National Health Corps is a fantastic model for how we can use national service to address uh, health issues and health equity. So uh, I'm excited about this model program launch in Delaware. I'm grateful for everybody who's helped make it happen. Uh, I look forward to seeing the partners sign up, um, the new members uh, sign up, and to getting this program up and running as soon as we possibly can. Thank you to everyone who's helped make this happen. Thank you, uh, Senator Coons and, and Rita and everyone who's joined us today, all the partners uh, who we've heard from. I just wanna close by saying that this is a historically divisive time in, in our country and to some extent, our state and our county. This is a way we can all come together uh, to address the most urgent concerns in front of us, the most urgent health concerns using a proven national model and show the nation we can be a leader, help support Senator Coons in his nation leading effort to have something like this grow across the nation. So thank you so much everyone for joining us today uh, and let's get this thing off and running.